What's up guys, it's your boy Random Customs back here with another 6.4 Power Stroke Rebuild. And uh, this is our guy right here. This motor is going in that red F350 over there. If you've watched any of the past build series, you know the story on that truck and uh, what the deal is. That being said, this motor is out of a previous truck that I had swapped. And uh, this one has no compression on one of the cylinders. I honestly, I don't remember which one, but we'll find out here in a, in a little bit when we get it pulled off. So this is what my uh, six fours look like when I pull them out of the truck. I leave as much stuff attached to the motor as possible. Um, so there's less fluids leaking around and stuff like the fuel cooler. All this is left on the motor when I pull it out um, and it just makes a nicer package to remove. So that being said, um, go ahead and get our chain stuff off of here. Get the GoPro strapped on and uh, we'll get right into this thing. Let's get it. First thing, lay your fuel cooler down on the ground and pop off these two lines right here. Clamp there, clamp there, slide that off drain all your cooling out. Then we're gonna take off, um, there's gonna be a 10 millimeter up here. There's gonna be two down here, one right there, one right there, and another one right there. Unhook your two uh, fuel lines right here. These are gonna be 17 millimeter. Um, there's gonna be a little bit of diesel leaks out there and pop off this connector right here for um, your turbo actuator. And then pop off this clamp here for that line and this whole bracket with the U-bend uh, for the uh, the turbo intercooler pipe, that whole bracket and the fuel cooler and everything will pull straight off. Once you have those bolts and uh, clamps off, next thing you're gonna do is pull this wiring harness out from uh, where it's connected to the turbo actuator and you're gonna slide uh, this little wiring clip off of there. There's gonna be two more right here on this bracket for the exhaust back pressure switch. Come over here, unhook it, at the pressure switch, it's gonna have a clip on the side of it like that, and then pull it out just like so. Your dipstick is gonna be held on by a 13 millimeter nut right here, slide that out of the way. Pop off your glow plug control harness, just like that. And then uh, just grab this thing with two hands and kind of wiggle on it, and this whole kit come off just like that. Drain out some of the uh, fuel and coolant into this pan. And then uh, we can set this off to the side. I would recommend wrapping uh, this bundle with saran wrap. That'll keep all the dust and stuff away from your fuel cooler. Keep that nice and clean. Next thing we're gonna do is take off all of the exhaust up pipes and EGR tubes. So you're gonna have three 13 millimeter bolts holding this on the manifold on each side. Three here, three there. There's gonna be a total of six 10 millimeter bolts that um, go from the up pipe to the back of the turbo. Two more 10 millimeters here two on this bracket right here, and then two more down here uh, where it goes to the EGR. You're gonna have a connector right here to pull apart, slide this red piece back, push the tab in, and then this piece will pull out. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. Probably can't. There we go, just like that. And then uh, once you have the up pipes off, we're gonna take off this heat shield next. So let me get these out of the way um, and I can show you the bolts to get to those. I forgot to mention there's a bracket right here for uh, the tube that goes to the EGR. Pop that off as 10 millimeter bolt. For the shield, we're gonna have five 10 millimeters, one here, one there. That also attaches the ground cable that goes to the body. One uh, 10 millimeter bolt right here in the middle. And then uh, three more over here on this side. I'm sorry, there's six bolts total. You don't have to take off these little um, eight millimeters. These just attach the shield to the other half. So there's gonna be six 10 millimeters, three here, three there, pop them off, and then I'll show you how to slide it out. To pop this heat shield off, you're gonna to wanna to pull it up off of the studs on this side, pull it up off the studs on this side as well, and then you just kind of work it out, turn it to the side a little bit, and you have to fight with it a little to get it to come out, but it should slide right out from underneath the back of the turbo like that, and now your high pressure pump is exposed. Next thing we're gonna do is uh, pop off your two oil feed lines right here, 17 millimeter bolts. Take off the air intake right here, hose clamp on that. And then these are gonna be 15 millimeter for the turbo clamps. One down in here, one down in there. Can't really see it from here. It's the same thing as this right down the middle underneath that oil feed line. And then after that, the turbo will be ready to come up. Now when you go to remove these turbos, um, first thing you gotta know is there's gonna be four dowels down in here. Two on this side and two on that side. Um, and these tend to get stuck up with rust and just set up from sitting for the years. So spray them really good with WD-40 and then put your um, chain hoist around the center of the turbo. 
Now, you can pry very, very gently right here under the compressor um, outlet where it goes into the intercooler and uh, between that and the valve cover, very gently right there. You can get under it right here over the top of the high pressure uh, fuel pump cover, again, very gently. Um, and I also pry right here off of the intake and uh, the inlet of the exhaust side of the turbo. It would be very, very gentle because these are aluminum parts, cast aluminum, and uh, they will break easily. So once you get it slightly loose, and start uh, putting a little pressure on it with the hoist, come back with your pry bar and work on it a little more, and it should pop just like that. So now that that's loose, go ahead and jack it up. Be careful of um, your oil feed line over here. We don't want that to get all bound up. So raise this thing up and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and cover all the ports, the oil drain ports with a rag. I'll get this set out of the way. And then the next thing we're gonna start on is um, the EGR tube over here. So let me get this out of the way, get the other camera so I can show you where all the bolts are on this and we'll get that pulled off. Start with the vertical EGR cooler. There's gonna be two 13 millimeter nuts, one here, one there. Take off uh, this hose clamp for the coolant line and then slide that out of the way. There's gonna be another coolant line right here. Take off, you can either disconnect it there or I like to take it out right here, eight millimeter bolt. Pop that off. Um, these can be stuck up in there a little bit. They have an O-ring on it. So just be careful, wedge it out. This is a plastic line right here. Be very careful with it that you don't crack it. There's gonna be an electrical connector up here for the sensor. Squeeze the tab, pull it straight off. And then there's gonna be 12.8 millimeter there. 10 millimeter right there. Be three 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolts um, for the brackets, two here, one there. And then you're gonna have a 13 millimeter there and a 13 millimeter right back in there. I don't know if you can see that. The vertical cooler will come off. Slide over here to the horizontal one. This is gonna have two clamps holding it on, 11 millimeter, one there, one there. That will loosen the main part of the cooler, take off, there's gonna be, change camera. There should be a bolt in there holding this line on, this one's gone. It's gonna be an eight millimeter bolt for that bracket. And then take off the other end of the line right here. Um, or sorry, this one right here. It's gonna be same thing, eight millimeter bolt, holding that in, get a pry bar in there, you can wedge it off, be gentle with it. That'll take care of both of the EGR coolers. Let me get all that done, and then we'll roll on to the next thing. After you get the EGR coolers off, you can pop off um, your intake that has the EGR valves in it. Four uh, eight millimeter bolts on there. There's gonna be two connectors over here. These guys have this stupid style tab where you gotta like kind of pry it back. Um, so you're gonna be this gray one up here, the black one right there. You can pop that off, just like so. Um, Next, come over here, pop off this little heat shield. It's got one of them little clips on there that you gotta kinda pull slash spin off. There's gonna be a 10 millimeter nut underneath that for the glow plug controller bracket. 5 16 bolt here, or sorry, eight millimeter bolt there, another one right there, and another one right here. Pop off um, your wiring harness. So this one, get on here with a screwdriver or something, wedge it off. Um, your two connectors for the glow plug control module. Squeeze this tab over here on the side, that little button, and they will pull off. Sometimes they can be on there pretty good. Pop your glow plug um, controller off, and then we're going to start unhooking the wiring harness. So there's going to be a connector here for glow plugs. Um, there's going to be a bunch of sensors down in here, two right here in the intake, um, two down here. There's going to be one right here, one right there. Most everything on this side should have been unhooked already. Same thing, glow plug again. Cam sensor is right down in here. These are usually on there pretty good, but you squeeze in the middle and it'll pull off just like that. Um, you're gonna have a crank sensor down here. Same thing as the cam sensor. This one's already unhooked. I guess I did that earlier. Squeeze in the middle, pull it off, and then just snake your harness up through there. It's gonna be clipped in in a few different spots. Um, it looks like these little plastic guys right here that tend to get brittle and break, so be careful with them. Um, so get glow plug control um, module and the bracket off of there. Pull your wiring harness off. Um, 
should just be those connectors. I don't see anything else. And then uh, we'll be ready to start working on the fuel lines and the intake. Next, we're gonna take off the fuel return line. Two eight millimeter bolts, one there, one there. Two 16 millimeter banjo bolts that bolt the uh, return line, the cylinder head, one there, and one tucked back in right there. After that, you can take off um, your heater core line. You have a eight millimeter bolt here, 10 millimeter bolt there. If you're planning on reusing this, be very, very careful. It's plastic, super brittle because it's been next to this heat its entire life. Now, you can get a Dorman replacement part um, from AutoZone that is all steel. That's what I do most of the time. Um, I believe they also have a replacement for this Y pipe here. Um, and while we're talking about it, you can take this off to two eight millimeter bolts, one there, one right here. Um, I would recommend replacing it with something steel. It'd be a lot stronger. Once that's off, start taking off your fuel lines over here, 18 millimeter, pop that off, pop that off. Take a lot of care to make sure everything stays clean around this. This is your high pressure fuel pump. It's very sensitive to any contaminants, any dirt or anything like that. Um, you've got a 10 millimeter bolt over here for the bracket on the return line. Take that off. And then after that's done, you can pop off your uh, fuel filter. There's gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt here and two eight millimeters, one there, one there. There's normally two fuel lines. This one I already have off for some reason. And then take off this other one here. Once that's off, um, your fuel filter housing will be off. Most of these fuel lines will be off. Um, your fuel return line and the heater core line will be off as well as this thing. And then there's just a couple more things we gotta um, unbolt from the intake and then we can get that popped off. Next, you can take out uh, the turbo oil drain tube. There's gonna be a 10 millimeter nut right here in this bracket holding it down. Now, these things are always a super pain to get out. So what I've found the best way to get out, put a pair of vice grips on the bottom right there, and then come through here with a pry bar and wedge right off of um, the pedestal right there. And I don't know if I can do this one-handed. Let's see if I can get the pry bar to flip over. But this is the best way to get it to come out, just like that. Um, it's got an O-ring on there, and you can see all the junk in there. They tend to get set up, and they don't want to come out. Um, you take off your fuel lines. 10 millimeter nut or bolt right there. Another 10 millimeter right there. Pop your fuel lines off. And then do your other high pressure fuel lines that go over to the cylinder head. These are 16 millimeter nuts. There's gonna be an eight millimeter uh, bracket holding them out of the intake. And then we can finally unbolt the intake. Now, what I would highly recommend you do before you uh, pull this intake off is take a picture of all the bolts over here so you know which one of these were studs, which one had nuts on them. Uh, Cause trust me, it's gonna be super confusing when you go back together because not every one of them is a stud, not everyone has a nut on it. So definitely take the time to take some good pictures so you know uh, what, when, where. And then intake is straightforward. They're all 10 millimeters, pop these out. Um, same thing on this side, intake will come up. And then uh, I think we're gonna start working on the heads next. All right, next we're gonna start working on the valve covers. So these are 12 millimeter, um, pretty straightforward. There's a bunch of them around the outside. Pop that off. And uh, I'm gonna go to time-lapse to show removing all this, but real quick, I'm gonna tell you what you need to take it off. For um, these injector clips, they can be kind of a pain in the butt. You just gotta wiggle them gently. They're plastic so they can break easy. Um, there is some kind of a tool, like a little wedge tool they make to, to pry these off. I've never had to use it. And then the wiring harness is just clipped on the high pressure rail that'll fold out of the way. Injector line, 17 millimeter, those are straight forward. Two 10 millimeters for your high pressure fuel rail. And then you've got to push it through this little rubber grommet right here. Now, um, the cleaner you can keep this fuel stuff, a lot better off you're gonna be. Um, injectors are gonna be T35, I believe, or T40. Um, I'll let you know after I get the, the star bit for that. Um, and these are self backing out. So as you turn the, turn the bolt out, it will pull the injector out. You don't have to have a special tool or anything to pull that out. For your rockers, they're gonna have two 13 millimeter bolts, one there and one right above it. Same thing all the way down through. For your uh, rocker box, these are gonna be eight millimeters. There's gonna be a bunch of them around the outside. That'll come off. And then uh, after that, it's just head bolts. Make sure you don't lose your rocker bridges um, or your, your valve bridges, these little guys here. Um, so let me get all this done, and then, uh, like I said, I'm gonna go to time lapse while I pull this off, um, just for sake of it, and then uh, I'll come back to you when we get to the head bolts.
guys, now that all that is off, um, the injector hold down bolts were actually T45 Torx bit. So now that uh, you have all the rockers and everything off, go ahead and take out your head bolts. You're gonna have um, five of these 10 millimeter bolts up here in the top. And then you're gonna have the rest of these big um, regular head bolts. These are uh, 16 millimeter. Now, depending on what kind of air gun you have, um, if it's a good stout, healthy air gun, you might be able to take them out with that. Um, if not, you're probably gonna have to use a breaker bar because it's a, it's a big bolt for sure. Um, so get all your bolts out. This is how I have my chain hooked up and then uh, get your engine hoist over here, lift the head off, and uh, we'll see what things look like underneath of it. All right guys, so we got the cylinder head off and uh, here's our carnage. We've got a melted piston on cylinder number eight due to the emissions and the regen cycle and all that crap. Um, that being said, my machine shop, um, he has the ability to put a sleeve in these cylinders, a dry sleeve. Now, I don't know if this one can be just bored out. I think the biggest he can go is 30 thousandths. Um, or if it'll have to be sleeved. I prefer not to sleeve it, but uh, that's, uh, that's dished in pretty good right there. So it's probably gonna end up uh, having to be sleeved. Um, so that being said, moving on, um, take your lifters out, 10 millimeter bolt on the keeper. Same thing over here, take a magnet. Once you get this plastic thing out of the way, take a magnet down there and pull all your lifters out. Um, and then the only, only other thing we gotta do to the head before it's ready for the machine shop is take off the exhaust manifold, straight forward, 10 millimeter bolts down that. Take off um, your lift bracket down there, it's bolted on, take off this little thing here. Any of these little plugs, like that thing there, anything that, um, that the machine shop is gonna have to take off when it goes in uh, his cleaning tank. Like these guys here have O-rings behind them and uh, the cleaning tank will eat those O-rings right up, the acid in there. So make sure all that's taken off and then the heads will be ready to go over. Um, so we get the lifters out on this side and then we will repeat the same process over here with everything on that cylinder head. Um, really the only difference on this side is I gotta take off this PCV hose right here for the crankcase vent. Simple as clamp there. Um, it's got a bolt holding it on down here. Same thing, a couple bolts there for the brackets and then another clamp down there. So take that off. We'll take everything else off this side, the rocker box, the head, all that same thing as that side. And then I'll come back to you when that's done and uh, we'll start on um, the high pressure fuel pump and this stuff on the top. All right, now that you have uh, both of the cylinder heads off, I think the next thing I'm gonna do is take off this front cover here that houses uh, your water pump, oil pump, all that good stuff. So this one is just gonna have a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts all around it. Um, some of these don't have to come out. Some of these on a water pump don't need to come out. Um, some do. And then as far as the, uh, the oil pump down here, this cover generally is a little bit of a pain to get out um, because it's got dowels in there. So there's kind of like a little tab right here you can get behind with a pry bar, but be very, very gentle because it's cast aluminum um, and it will break if you reef on it too hard. So pop that off. Um, Take these guys off here. These, uh, this is where your fan shroud bolts. Um, you can also take off the motor mounts. It's gonna have four 13 millimeter bolts around it. The dipstick, um, I forgot to show you that. Dipstick's got eight millimeter right here. Pop that bracket off, it'll pull straight out. Sometimes these are stuck in there a little bit, so you might have to tap it from underneath. Um, so you just have to look at it. Um, so let me get this off, and then you can also take off uh, the high pressure fuel pump cover. It's gonna have five eight millimeter bolts, two here, two there, one down in here. Pull that uh, cover off. Again, make sure you keep all these fittings clean because we don't want to get dirt down the pump. And then uh, we'll move on to this other stuff. After you get the cover off, you're gonna pull off um, this gasket that has your wiring harness for the high pressure fuel pump in there. Now, the thing you gotta be very careful about with these is the little tabs right here tend to get brittle and break, which this one is actually broke. It's just not broke all the way off. This one is broke all the way off. And these are generally considered um, a wear item anyway. You replace it um, if you ever have to take the cover off. Um, so that being said, to get the pump off, three um, hex bolts here, one, two, three. For um, the turbo drain pedestal, you have five um, 13 millimeters, four on the outside, and one buried here in the middle, and then two 10 millimeters in the middle. For um, your oil cooler assembly, gonna have a bunch of uh, 10 millimeters all the way around it. That all come off. You can take off um, your flex plate back here. And then this outer, um, I guess you call it the timing cover, rear timing cover. It's gonna have a couple of 10 millimeter bolts around it. There's gonna be a couple more down there in the bottom. 
get all that off and then uh, we'll be ready to flip the flip the uh, block over and take the oil pan off and uh, start disassembling the crank and everything else. Now that you have uh, your block flipped over and uh, most of your oil cleaned up and stuff, go ahead and take the oil pan off. These are gonna be eight millimeter bolts all the way around. There's a ton of them. Uh, make sure you have a good fitting socket because these guys tend to get rusted and they like to round off um, and they're not exactly in the easiest spot to get to uh, once they do strip. So get the oil pan off and then we're gonna take the windage tray off underneath it. For the windage tray, um, you have a bunch of eight millimeter bolts all the way around it. You can take off your oil pickup tube, also eight millimeter, and then we can get to the deck plate. For the deck plate, there's gonna be 20 of these bolts all the way across it. Take all them out and then you can gently um, hit it with a hammer right here to break the seal. It'll come loose. Um, now is a good time to go ahead and strip the block, everything on the outside of it. So your block heater, um, all these little plugs that go into the coolant passageways, take out um, your crankcase vent plug right here, crank, can crank sensor on this side, um, cam, cam sensor over here, there's another plug back there. Take out anything that has an O-ring or it's plastic, anything that can uh, get eaten up by the acid um, at the machine shop. And then uh, once you have the deck plate off, then we can start on um, our rod caps and then uh, get this crank out of here. After you get the deck plate off, um, next thing we're gonna do is take off our connecting rod cap so we can um, push the piston and the rod out of uh, the cylinder and uh, get our crankshaft out. Now, before you take these off, you need to label them um, so you know, so that cap stays with that rod because these are custom made where they hack them off in the machine. So they're actually like a jagged cut and each one is specific to that rod. So the way I mark mine is I take this little punch and I put a light dent in each one. As you can see there's one little dent on both the cap and the rod for uh, for piston or cylinder number one. Same thing over here, two dots on the cap, two dots on the rod and on three, four, just like that. Um, make sure you, you don't have to do a dent necessarily. You can mark it some other way, but make sure you keep that cap with that rod and it's best if you keep the same rod um, and the same cylinder because everything is balanced from the factory and you know it'll be right that way and you won't have any issues so after uh, we get these out and pull the crankshaft out and uh, there'll just be a couple more things to do before this uh, block is ready to go off the machine all right now that the crank is out the only thing left are these piston cooling jets they have a 10 millimeter bolt on them. there's gonna be one for each cylinder all the way down through um, take those out, then take the camshaft out. It's gonna have two 13 millimeter bolts, one there, one there. When you pull the cam out, make sure it comes out nice and straight and it doesn't kink up or down like that so you don't scratch any of the bearings or the bearing surface on the cam. So once all this is out, the block will be completely stripped. Then we can go ahead and put our crankshaft back in, uh, put our deck plate back on, and uh, we will be able to ship this off to the machine shop along with cylinder heads. And uh, from then, we will wait about probably a week and a half, two weeks, till he can uh, get to it, get a machine and everything. And then uh, we'll be able to start building this. So um, let me get this all back in there, um, get everything cleaned up, and then uh, I'll show you what's next. All right guys, so I just got back from the machine shop. Um, I dropped off the block, the cylinder heads, everything that he needs to go through. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is go through and clean all my parts while I wait. Um, so I start over there in the solvent tank, get all the heavy grease and oil off. And then uh, I took out an investment in Walmart supply brake cleaner. And uh, that will be the finishing touch of the cleaning process is give everything squeaky clean with a uh, brake cleaner. Um, as far as like the camshaft connecting rods, um, after I clean those, I always hit it with some WD-40 or some kind of oily substance. Cause it's gonna be about two weeks between the time that I clean everything to the time that I actually start building the motor again. And uh, in that time frame, the parts can start to rust and uh, I don't want that. So make sure if you clean them, um, before that time that you go through and put some oily on it to uh, prevent that from happening. So uh, that being said, time frame is about two weeks. So the way it works is I drop off um, the block and the cylinder heads at the machine shop. It takes them about two, three days to uh, clean everything, degrease it, and measure everything, figure out what size um, pistons, bearings, stuff that I need. So as soon as he figures that out, he'll shoot me a text, say you need 20,000 oversized pistons and 10,000 undersized bearings whatever the measurements are. As soon as I have all the measurements, I can go ahead and order my rebuild kit. Um, so everything that I order usually as of right now, um, this is September, 2021. Um, everything that I've been using comes from Little Power Shop in uh, Cyclone PA. You can order everything right online or give them a call. Um, <clears throat> so as soon as I have all my measurements, I order the rebuild kit. It takes about a week for the kit to come in. Um, and it takes about, a week, week and a half from the time that my machine shop gives me all the measurements 
um, until he's actually done machining the block, the heads, checking the valves, all that. So in about probably two weeks or so, I should have the block back, the heads back, should have all my rebuild kit and parts in, and uh, we should be ready to go with this thing. So um, I'll probably end part one of this video here, and part two uh, will be um, beginning the process of building the motor. So um, that being said, if you like the video, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, follow the Instagram if you want. I will leave that down in the description. And then uh, part two will be up in about a week or two. And uh, we'll see you over there. So peace out, boys.